In today's video, I want to show you how I create sci-fi gun design concepts using Stable Diffusion AI in Photoshop. Let's start with a quick sketch in Photoshop. I'm using a square document size with a white background. With a black solid brush, I begin painting contours. At this stage, you don't have to think too much, just explore different shapes and see what looks interesting. It still has to look functional, so include a grip, a trigger, and some kind of barrel indicating where bullets or ammunition would be stored. Now you don't need too many details, just some small shapes and holes here and there, and you can quickly create something interesting. I'll be using the Stable Diffusion Forge UI installed on Windows with the Juggernaut version 10 model. However, you can use your favorite model with the recommended settings. Make sure to enable ControlNet and then enable Canny. For the model, I'm using Koya Control Lite XL Canny. Now upload your sketch or you can paste it directly there if you copied it from Photoshop. For the prompt, describe what you want to see, like a sci-fi futuristic black metal gun with orange and green accents, and then hit generate. Next to the result, you can see how the canny preprocessor interpreted your sketch, displaying the contour lines. I usually play around with the styles I've created, which you can find in my other video on art styles. For what I need, styles like game concept painting work okay, but I also like the 3D styles, such as the game asset style, which produces nice results. I also like the hard surface and 3D icon styles. I found that the icon version gave me cleaner results, so for this video, I'll stick with that style. Once you've selected a, a version you like, uh, you can use high res fix to make it larger. Uh, alternatively, you can try another method by sending it to image to image using the photo icon. Uh, it will pick up the prompt for you, but not the art style, so you'll need to add that manually. And depending on your video card's capabilities, try different sizes. I usually go for the maximum size. For denoise strength, I use 0.45, so it can add more details while maintaining similarity. After about 20 seconds, I get a bigger image with better quality. Let's go back to text to image and try a different prompt. We could try a cyberpunk style with neon pink and blue colors, or maybe a plasma gun with energy coils and electric arcs. Another idea could be an alien look with iridescent metallic material, which could be interesting. We can play around with all kinds of ideas, like a steampunk design or one with a rugged industrial look. There are so many possibilities to explore. Moving on to the next example, this time I want the AI to see more than just contours. I want to give it a hint of what colors to use and where. So I've decided on a black background and for the gun colors, I want a golden texture with orange accents using a hard transfer brush. I'm trying to give it some form. It still needs a good edge so the canny can pick up the contours. But if you squint your eyes, you should be able to see it. Now go to the image to image tab. Here you can upload or paste your sketch. Then I'll choose the 3D icon style. For the prompt, I'll describe the weapon and the colors, including the background. For denoise, I'll use 0.75 because I don't want the result to look like a sketch. I want it to have a more 3D look, so it needs more freedom. If I hit generate, I'll get something like this, but it might not be very similar because I didn't enable control net. So just like in the previous example, I'll enable canny with the Koya model and try again. Look at that. How similar and clean it looks now. I'll drag the result to image to image, then disable control net. For the size, I'll go with the maximum size, and for denoise strength, I'll use 0.45. The result is a bigger image, and it seems to have picked up some nice extra texture. Pretty cool, I would say, for just a few minutes of work. Sometimes I want to modify small parts of the design. I usually just copy the image and paste it into Photoshop. Then I use the remove tool to fix or remove parts I don't want. For instance, I decided I wanted some holes in the bottom part of the gun, so I painted two circles with a round brush using the color of the background. Now I can paste the result back into image to image and generate a new version where those holes are blended better and look like they belong there. See, it looks good now. For the last example, I decided to create a gun with a purpose. 
designing the thumbnail for this video with a gun that fits well in the thumbnail. I'm using the existing colors, green and orange, to paint the form of the gun. I'm trying to create a shape that looks interesting, but also fits well in the empty space between the text. Um, just brushing and erasing to give it nice contours. Then, you know, I added some uh, orange accents to make it pop a little and not be too boring. It's a it's a relaxing process. You just go with the flow and let the sketch come to life. Before AI, I used to do a lot of quick sketches, then choose the best looking one and uh, improve upon it. But now with AI, you just need that basic um, sketch and AI can improve it and get a lot of you know variation. It saves a lot of time. AI is a tool that can be incredibly useful, allowing you to guide it to bring your ideas to life efficiently. Now I'm going back to the Stable Diffusion Image to Image tab, and I'll paste or upload the image. I'll choose the 3D icon style. For the size, I'm using 1920 by 1088. You might ask, why not 1080? Well, because 1080 is not divisible by 64, so it will crash when I use Control Net. I'm using 0.7 for the denoise, and I have a long prompt that describes the color and details of the weapon. I hit generate, and of course, it's different because I forgot again to enable control net. So I'll enable Canny and use the Koya model and generate again. Now I noticed that part of the gun grip is missing, so I checked the Canny result. Um, as you can see, I'm missing some parts of the weapon in certain areas because there wasn't enough contrast on the edges to be able to see them. Um, you can uh, play with the settings in Control Net to adjust that, or you can add better contours in the sketch. Or the lazy version I chose was to generate again until I get a weapon with that part. Then I drag the result back to image to image, and now Canny can see the contours of that. And this is the result. Now I copy the image and paste it into Photoshop. I activated the text layers to see how it looks. I decided to move it down a little to avoid it being too close to the text. And I reconstructed the top part with content aware fill. Then I noticed that the orange color in the weapon was too strong. So I wanted it to be more similar to the text color. I used selective color to adjust it so it matches better. Additionally, I found a floating piece that doesn't belong there, so I removed it. Now, the thumbnail is ready. Thank you for watching. If you found something useful, please leave a like. Have a great day.